Welcome back. In the last segment, we discussed what it means to be in orbit around the Earth. And we made a note that being in orbit is something specific. It is possible to be out in space, but not in orbit. But you can't be in orbit and not in space. In this segment, I want to start with defining where space begins. So we can agree that satellites in orbit around the Earth are in space. And we can agree that when we are sitting here on Earth, we are not in space. The question I want to ask is, where does space start? Where do we define the line between being on Earth and being in space? So when you think about space, you probably imagine the Earth surrounded by an atmosphere that gets thinner as you go higher up. And then the atmosphere runs out. And beyond that, things are floating above us out in space. And it's certainly true that the atmosphere does gradually get thinner. But there isn't really a super obvious place where the atmosphere ends and space begins. So let's think a little bit about how we might define where this transition happens. So starting on the Earth's surface, as we go up higher and higher in altitude, there's less and less atmosphere. And there's a point at which humans have trouble breathing. There isn't enough air to sustain us. That limit is at about 6 kilometers above sea level, so 20,000 feet. For example, if you want to climb Mount Everest, whose summit is at 29,000 feet, so about 8 kilometers, it takes weeks to acclimatize to the altitude, and climbers are always bringing supplemental oxygen tanks with them. So that's definitely not quite space, so let's keep going higher. Commercial airplanes fly at 10 kilometers above the surface, 35,000 feet. Airplanes are flying with the help of the atmosphere. They're using the air both in the design of their engines and to create lift so they can fly. Military airplanes fly a little bit higher than commercial airplanes, typically 20 kilometers, so 65,000 feet above the Earth's surface. These are still airplanes, so again, definitely not space. If we want to go higher, weather balloons or spy balloons fly at heights of about 30 kilometers or 100,000 feet above the Earth's surface. The world records for flight, whether it's a balloon or an airplane, are all at about 40 kilometers above the Earth's surface or 130,000 feet. So the limit for space must be higher than this. In thinking about how to define space, Theodore von Karman wrote some influential papers in about the 1950s asking, where does the atmosphere get so thin that there's just no hope of flying an airplane? The limit that von Karman came up with was 100 kilometers above the Earth's surface, or 330,000 feet. And that is currently the international definition of where space starts, 100 kilometers above the Earth's surface. It's a somewhat arbitrary point in terms of physics. There's still trace atmosphere well above this point. But this limit is really important in terms of policy. Airplanes flying over countries are subject to different rules and regulations compared to satellites going over different countries. And that switch happens at exactly 100 kilometers. However, just to be extra confusing, NASA in 2005 decided for various reasons to change its definition of space to 80 kilometers. And so if you travel above 80 kilometers, you're considered an astronaut by NASA, but not by the international community. So as we go higher than this arbitrary line of 100 kilometers, it's not that the atmosphere stops. There are tiny traces of atmosphere out to 1,000 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Nonetheless, there are many satellites that orbit in this region. I started this segment asking, where does space start? And we've decided that space starts at the Kármán line at 100 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Let's end by asking, how far away is space? So again, you may have this image of your head that sup space is super far away, and there's things floating above us. Let's say you could point your car straight up and start driving. You can't, but let's forget that for a moment. How long would it take to drive to space? Like a few minutes, a few days? The Kármán line is 100 kilometers away. That's 60 miles. And if I'm driving my car straight up at the speed limit, that would take less than an hour. So like maybe not a trip to the grocery store, but you don't even need to pack a snack. And so I want to change your mental image away from space being super far away and things sort of gently floating overhead to something more like this, where space is not all that far away. It's an hour drive. And objects in orbit are moving really fast overhead. And in the next segment, we'll define the names of various different orbits around Earth and come up with a way to describe and quantify these different kinds of orbits.